Linux Mint 21.2 is upon us. The beta dropped last week and I've been using it since then, which means that the final release should happen really soon. And even though it's a minor number upgrade, it still contains a lot of important changes for Mint users, from a theme revamp to touchpad and touchscreen gestures and big updates for XFC users as well. But it misses the mark on a few things. So let's look at everything that's changed and let's look at our sponsor. This video is sponsored by Chasm Workspaces, the container streaming platform that lets you stream any OS, desktop or app to your web browser. And they've been working on implementing one of the most community requested features, translations. Now it's a developer preview for now and Chasm would like you to give it a shot and provide feedback on how well things work. They will automatically use the language and the time zone of your web browser in any OS, desktop, terminal or app you're streaming. Or you can set the language and time zone manually from your profile if you prefer or if you use a VPN for example. You can download that developer preview for free right now using the link in the description below and don't hesitate to let Chasm know what you think about it. They're really focused on implementing community requests right now so give them a hand. Okay, let's begin with one of the major changes to the Cinnamon desktop, gestures. And if you got used to the super smooth one-to-one -one gestures of Gnome or Plasma on Wayland, or even elementary OS on X11, you will be disappointed here. Mint still uses X11 and their gestures act like keyboard shortcuts. You perform the gesture on the touchpad and once your fingers have moved enough, the animation happens all at once. It's just not as pleasant or smooth as one-to-one -one gestures, where everything moves with your fingers, making it easier to understand where things are going and to cancel the gesture as well. And it's not that it's impossible to have one-to-one -one gestures on X11. Elementary OS has them, Pop OS also has some, but it takes more work to integrate them in the window manager and Mint didn't do that. And yes, I am picky about these gestures, but keyboard shortcut-like gestures are just not as good. You can't preview what's happening or what's behind the gesture. They just happen all at once. They can be really janky and really stuttery at times, and you cannot even cancel them midway. They're just not as good. They're better than not having gestures, but they're not as good. Now, these gestures are disabled by default. You will be able to enable them in the new settings panel. They are very configurable though, contrary to GNOME or KDE. You can choose what to do for three or four finger swipes, up, down, left or right, and the list of options is very long, from managing windows, tiling, showing the desktop or managing audio playback. And if that's not enough, you can even choose to run a command of your choice. There are also options for two, three or four finger pinching, although none of these options offer the ability to zoom in or out. You can even configure the thresholds before the gestures are triggered, separately for swipes and for pinches. And look, it's the best, most configurable implementation of non-one-to-one -to -one gestures I've ever seen. It's not bad, it's good that Mint gets gestures, but they're really not great if you compare them with what every other major desktop environment has. Now Mint 21.2 also changes a few things in terms of how the distro looks, or how it can look. First, instead of the endless list of selectable themes in their dark and light variant and all their color variants, you now get styles. The style defines the theme you're using, for example, Mint Y, Advaita, or the older Mint X. For each style, you can pick a mixed mode, where apps can be light or dark at the same time, a dark mode, where every app that supports the dark mode preference will use it, and a light mode. That support for the dark mode preference is now included thanks to the XDG desktop portal, which means the preference will also apply to Flatpak apps or Libadvita apps installed through packages. And on top of that, you have a choice of accent colors if the theme supports it. For example, there are no accent colors for the Advaita theme or the high contrast theme. It is a much improved way to switch the look and feel of your desktop on the fly easily and developers will be able to create styles that can be integrated there, which is also very cool. Now, if you prefer to mix and match various themes and colors, you still have advanced settings, 
that will also let you change your icon and cursor theme. Folder icons are no longer the same color as what Windows uses. They will now use your accent colors instead, which is much better in my opinion. You can still set that color individually in the advanced settings if you want. And there's also a new Yaru inspired color theme for folders if you want it. And while we're on accent colors, you will also see them on every tooltip. They will all use that color and they are now unified between GTK2, GTK3 and Cinnamon apps. And you will also get the accent color on notifications, although it's just a stripe of color there. It is a small refinement of the big look changes that they brought in 21.1, but it's still a welcome change. It makes the whole desktop feel more personal by reusing your accent color everywhere. It just looks better. Now, other small visual changes include replacing the monochrome icons with symbolic icons and apps that do not support these will now use the Advaita theme by default. And we're talking the old Advaita icon theme, which is a surefire way to make developers update their apps to support symbolic icons, because that old theme does not look good. Now, window title bar buttons are also better aligned, although it's really subtle and I would expect no one would notice. I wouldn't have if they hadn't mentioned it in the release notes and if I hadn't compared 21.1 with 21.2. Now, on the desktop side of things, the login screen received a lot of improvements with support for multiple keyboard layouts that you can switch between and support for tap to click as well. The on-screen keyboard is usable there and you can also configure the layout for it. And you can now more easily navigate this login screen using the keyboard and the arrow keys. The login screen now supports Wayland sessions although none of the desktops Mint provides supports that just yet. And yes, this is still an issue. Neither Cinnamon, Mate or XFC, the three officially supported editions of Mint, support Wayland. So that added Wayland support is just if you want to use Mint, but with a KD desktop, for example, that you would install from the Ubuntu 22.04 repo. So old KDE, who would do that? Now, once you're logged into Cinnamon, you can now resize the main menu by dragging its corner or its edge. And you can now disable notifications for connected devices that have a low battery level. As per the apps, the file manager Nemo now generates thumbnails using multi-threading, which means it should be way faster at displaying the contents of your image folders. The software manager got a small UI refresh with the search field in line with a header bar, with the hamburger menu moving up there as well. There are also big banners for the software that's currently holding the spotlight in the main software installer and featured apps are now located before the list of categories instead of these being the first thing visible. These featured apps can now include flat pack apps as well, not just packages and the scoring system was made more legible with just a note written next to a star icon instead of seeing the complete row of five stars each time. These are all minor changes, but they make the app look a bit more modern. I would say it's now on par with GNOME software or Discover. Now the app pages also got a small redesign with buttons in the header to install and to show the installation source. Now the image viewer and photo library manager Pix got a lot of changes, mostly due to its rebase on a new version of Gthumb. It now uses a header bar and buttons instead of the older menu bar but it also gets much better performance, support for new file formats like AVIF, HEIF and JXL, plus improved zoom controls, support for bigger thumbnail sizes, support for color profiles, a color picker, new image tools to edit your pictures and customizable keyboard shortcuts. It is a huge update and Pix might very well be the most complete photo library manager on Linux after Digicam, of course. And finally, Warpinator, the PC to PC file transfer program was reviewed by the OpenSUSE team and some security issues were discovered and fixed. So now files cannot be written outside of the directory that you picked in Warpinator and you will need to set up a security code if you want that app to remain open in the background. Finally, smaller changes include complete support for HEIF and AVIF file formats Throughout the OS, the document reader is now able to open Adobe Illustrator files, the older Mint Y legacy theme was renamed to Mint L, and offloading graphics rendering to a dedicated NVIDIA GPU is handled by the correct libraries to run in hybrid graphics mode. It's nothing 
too revolutionary in terms of the apps, their features, or the desktop, but Cinnamon is already one of the most complete desktop environments, and Mint ships it in its most complete form as well, so it's not like it was needing a lot more stuff. Now, all Linux Mint editions are still based on Ubuntu 22.04, and they are all LTS, supported until 2027. The next base change will be when Ubuntu 24.04 releases, which means that in the meantime, you get the Linux kernel 5.15 and all the Mesa and Nvidia drivers. You can always install manually the hardware enablement stack, which is in the repos, but this will not take you to the same level of newness as a recent Fedora, for example. Mint was never meant for the latest and greatest hardware. If you have like a very recent GPU or the latest CPU from Intel or AMD, Mint is never going to be your best choice to take advantage of all this hardware. Now, for the XFCE variant, you get the same improvements to the login screen, the apps, and the software manager, plus the new colored folder icons, tooltips, notifications, the symbolic icon changes, but you're not getting the styles manager and selector, and you're not getting the touchpad gestures either. Now still, you do get XFCE 4.18, which is a solid update over 4.16 that Mint used in the previous release. So first you're getting a graphical keyboard shortcut editor inside of Thunar, the terminal, and the text editor. The search menu in the settings will also always be shown, and the display settings give you the ability to decide what to do when a new external monitor is connected, like automatically mirroring or extending or asking you what you want to do about it. When selecting a theme, you can also automatically use the matching window manager theme, if one is available on the system. But what XFCE 4.18 brought is mostly improvements to the file manager, a lot of improvements. So Thunar got the ability to display the number of files in a directory in the list view. You can also add a file creation date column, and you can configure visible columns with a simple right click on any header. The file manager also got an image preview pane in the bottom left under the favorites list, or as a separate panel on the right of the main view. It also supports undo and redo, finally, with a notification being shown when you use these actions. You can also highlight files by setting either the background or the file name to a different color to make files and folders easier to identify. The toolbar of Thunar is also configurable with the ability to enable or disable icons and to move them around. Finally, Thunar supports split view, recursive file search, recently used files, and a new default application dialog when you right-click a file and select Open With. You can also enrich the context menu with custom actions, with a graphical editor for these. 4.18 is a huge XFCE update that Mint users will probably be very happy to get their hands on, especially if they felt the file manager was a bit limited, because now it's basically as powerful as Dolphin, but it looks way more simple. Now, as per Mate, there's nothing to report. It gets the same new stuff as XFC and Cinnamon, but not the gestures and not the style manager. And it still uses Mate 1.26, same as the previous Linux Mint release. So, Mint 21.2 is a solid update to the distro. It's a refinement, not a revolution. It looks a bit better now, less like Windows if I'm honest, it gains a few cool features, and its apps got better, notably the software manager and the image viewer and photo library manager. Unfortunately, Mint 21.2 still isn't the release where Mint enters the modern Linux world. Wayland support is still nowhere to be seen, and while a lot of people will not care, the sooner Mint starts working on it, the better the transition will be for everyone when it becomes necessary. And let's be blunt, Mint will not escape Wayland. There is no escape. They base their work on GTK and Mutter, and these things at some point will stop supporting X11. So unless Mint wants to stay on very outdated releases for the next 10 or 12 years, they're gonna have to move to Wayland. And so the sooner they start implementing Wayland support in Cinnamon and all their tools and the modifications and the patch sets that they apply on top of GNOME and GNOME applications, 
the better the transition will go for everyone using Mint in the future. And Mint also missed the mark on gestures. It's good that they're there, but they're really not great compared to what you can experience on GNOME or on KDE. Still, if you like Mint and if you use it, then this update is mandatory. It makes everything better. There's nothing here that will downgrade your experience. And if you didn't like Mint before, there's nothing here that will satisfy you. Unlike this segue to our sponsor, which will absolutely satisfy you. If you're a Linux user and you're looking for a new computer, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, stop looking at devices that were made to only support Windows. Buy something from Tuxedo from the link in the description below. They make laptops and desktops that run Linux out of the box. This means that all the components inside are picked because they are compatible with Linux. They have a big range of devices that should cover basically all of your needs and all of your price points. They are small ultrabooks, small really affordable NUCs, and very powerful workstations and gaming laptops and everything in between. Every device has a lot of configuration options for the CPU, the SSD, the RAM, the GPU, whatever else you want to change in it, you can. You can even have your own custom logo engraved on the lid of your laptop or your own custom keyboard layout engraved on the keys of your keyboard. And if you're going for a laptop, know that all their laptops are openable, repairable and upgradable, including the RAM, the SSD and the battery and sometimes even the wireless card. So if you need a new computer, don't buy a Windows PC, buy a Tuxedo PC using the link in the description below. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, there's always that thumbs down button and the comment section to tell me why you thought I sucked. And if you really enjoyed the video and you want to support the channel, well, there are plenty of links in the description as well for Libra Pay, Patreon, PayPal, YouTube Thanks, YouTube Memberships, you know how all of this works. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.